manager comes in at Texas School Book Depository. Gentlemen, I want everybody to go downstairs. The president and his wife is coming. Yeah! Oh, everybody gets all excited. All the men. <laughs> he come around the corner. I want every all the employees and all the staff to go downstairs. Y'all greet him. Give him a Texas welcome. Everybody goes downstairs around 12. Except one person. It is Lee Harvey Oswald. As a matter of fact, Lee Harvey Oswald goes two floors up and he opens the window. An Italian Marcano rifle. He's waiting for the president. As Miss Kennedy and John F. Kennedy turn and make that right turn, they will be right there in that right lane and Oswald is on the sixth floor of that building. There are mothers and there are fathers, there are children out here. And they're all here to see the president and his wife. I gotta have some kind of imagination, folks, as you make a left turn right here from the sixth floor of the school book depository. Lee Harvey Oswald will fire the first shot that misses the president, but the second shot, 2.3 seconds later, will hit the president right here. It hits him in the back of the neck and he automatically grabs for himself. Miss Kennedy turns around, starts shaking her husband. She doesn't know what's going on. Oswald from the sixth floor cocks back again and fires a third shot, hitting the president right here, right in the back of the head. The president's been hit. The president's been hit. I saw smoke behind that fence. I saw somebody back there. Look, I heard the gunshot. 177 people that are surrounding this area. Run up the grassy knoll, up those stairs. And guess what they find? Nothing. There's no shooter. There's no killer up there. Are you kidding me? See, down at Dealey Plaza, if you pop a firecracker or a fire bullet down there, it sounds like an echo. It could have came from anywhere. But a reporter who was in front of the Texas School Book Depository, he heard everything. Just a few minutes ago, the President of the United States turned from Houston Street onto Elm Street on his way to a scheduled luncheon appearance at the Stemmons Trademark. As the President turned, applause broke out from a sparse crowd on both sides of the street. And as he went by the Texas School Book Depository, headed for the triple underpass, there were three loud reverberating explosions. Nobody moved. Everyone seemed stunned. A few seemed to look around, wondering who has the firecrackers. And suddenly the Secret Service men sprang into action. The convertible bearing the President and Mrs. Kennedy sped away. And officers, both plain clothes and uniformed, seemed to spring from everywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, she was on my tour before. Guys, you know, a lot of people thought that that was the most horrible thing that happened that day at Dealey Plaza. But I want you to imagine Miss Kennedy. I want you to imagine. Car at the time of the explosions, we say that shots were fired from which upper window we do not know. We do not and cannot confirm the reports at this I want you to imagine her 11 minute journey that she makes from Parkland Hospital. I mean from Dealey Plaza to Parkland. For 11 minutes, she will hold her husband in her lap, shaking him and shaking him. Jack, wake up! Sweetheart, please wake up. Not here, not now, not in this city. Do it for your children. She'll be covered in blood. She'll have bone fragments all around her. And brain tissue will be on her lap. When they arrive at Parkland Hospital, she'll have one hand on the back of his head because he's got a hole in it this big. They automatically pull up to Parkland Hospital, slam on the brakes. Clint Hill gets out of the car, runs around, and opens the door. And he looks down and he sees that Miss Kennedy does not want to let go of her husband. 
Jacqueline, we are at the hospital, ma'am. You need to let go of your pre the president. You need to let go of your husband. I beg you, ma'am, let go of him. She turns around and looks up, and she has blood running down her face, and she says to him, Mr. Hill, my husband is dead. You know he's dead. Let me hold him in my arms, I beg you. Let me just hold my husband. On November 22nd, 1963, at 1.08 p.m., Dallas time, at Parkland Hospital, President Kennedy is pronounced dead. And Miss Kennedy will ensue in the funeral arrangements immediately. And she wants her husband buried on Monday. She invents, she, she invites everybody. She wants it to look just like Abraham Lincoln's funeral. All the armed forces, all the horse carriages open to the public. But something happens at the funeral. John Jr. salutes his father. He was Irish Catholic. And if y'all remember, when he salutes his father, there was a certain song playing in the background. It was this one. The JFK Memorial. An apology from the city of Dallas to Miss Kennedy. God bless America. In one of the most darkest tragedies in US history, believe it or not, the 35th president of the United States of America is shot and killed in my hometown. Ladies and gentlemen, I see people from all over the world. Rush, Russians, Germans, Australians. And everybody knows about it. Yeah. Everybody. It didn't affect Texans. It affected the world. It, everybody thinks it's only in the United States. No. I have so many people from India that know the story better than I do. And that is the end of your JFK tour. Thank you so much.